question. If they had done this as a tax, meaning you're going to pay, you and I are going to pay X dollars a year, and we're going to take that money into the federal government and pay for health care, as we do, for instance, Medicare, also been litigated and right. found constitutional, that would have been constitutional. But that Congress and this president didn't want to be dealing with a tax bill. So they cooked up this alternative scheme where they're compelling us to buy the product, which in this case is health insurance. It's not health care. It's health right. insurance. Um, supposedly under the commerce power, and that has never happened before, ever. But if they strike this down, and they use this commerce clause to do that, are you at all worried about opening up a can of worms that you were going to have more and more, that, that this is going to be seen as precedent, and then there are going to be more challenges to the federal government's power in this commerce clause, and it really could sort of gum up the works for a long time? You know, the, the, uh, the, the real can of worms here is if they win. To, to give you a, a simple explanation of how that would work, for the states to win, meaning for this mandate to be found unconstitutional, the Supreme Court doesn't have to change one dotted I or crossed T of its own law. But for them to uphold the mandate, they have to take the outer reach of the Commerce Clause and move it way, way out from where it stands now. How is it moving that much farther out when it comes, look at this, uh, look, I'm not going to, I didn't go to law school, but reading the Wheat case that everybody keeps bringing yes. up, but I don't want to get. Wickard but, v. Filbert, but that, right. it, which, is, which is among the reasons why uh, the government believes they're going to win this argument, yeah. that they will convince possibly Kennedy, Roberts, and maybe right. even Scalia, all three of them on this. Uh, how did that not stretch the outer limits? Uh, it of the did. Government? It absolutely did. And so and how you, does this have have stretch picked, it more? You've picked the farthest limit right, right now of the Commerce Clause, so you picked the right case. Um, in that case, Farmer Philburn mm -hmm. was doing something. He chose voluntarily to go do something, plant wheat, use it, feed it as hogs, and so forth, and sell those. Okay. Here, the person being compelled to buy the health insurance is literally doing nothing. They're doing nothing. Their choice is to sit still and do nothing. But they are going to you. But the, the argument is they're going to use the healthcare system at uh, some point in their lives. That it's 100 percent right. And at that point, they're regulatable mm -hmm. under the so current what do you, commerce so what clause. Do you, so how, uh, how so that that is the argument that it would fit in. And you say, yeah, but then you can regulate them. Then the commerce clause is a passive power. They can regulate commerce, interstate commerce. It doesn't mean they can compel it. They can't bring it into existence. Here, they're bringing it into existence. This is so unprecedented, first of all, that our federal government has never ordered us to buy a product before.